Hello and welcome to another update video about Solana. We want to start on the weekly chart because some of you have asked me for a long term outlook about Solana. So I will put this video um, as an updated long term video in our long into our long term video playlist. It's always worth checking that one out because there are some long term outlook videos for several coins. Um, most recently we started to cover, you know, after I did, I did make quite a few um, sort of end of September, October, um, just before we broke out um, as things were still very slow to give everybody a long term outlook and also the, well, the perspective to make their decisions if they want to, you know, get, get in for the long run for several coins. So there will be quite a lot of them from that period. But overall, uh, I need to update them regularly. So this is one of them and feel free to check that playlist out if you're interested. So looking at the overall structure on the Solana chart, um, we have a larger cycle wave one here in November 21. That was an impulse to the upside, not the most beautiful one, but it is a possible impulsive move to the upside in a wave one, then a wave two to the downside, which to be honest, isn't clearly corrective. So um, there are two interpretations. There is one in which I see this as all of the wave two correction. It certainly um, came down deep enough. For all of you who know my analysis, you know that I typically prefer a wave two to reach at least at least a 50% retracement level. Now that doesn't mean that is really a minimum requirement that that is a wave two that is reliable. So anything that is, you know, less deep than that, a shallow wave two or anything is less reliable. So this one is somewhat reliable and therefore we can definitely look for higher prices for Solana. However, however, the problem that we have on this chart is that still the structure isn't great of the decline. So it could rather be an A wave, maybe a five wave move in wave A. We might now be in the B wave and get one more low in a C wave later. Um, I would very much um, at least highlight the risk here. You know, I need to highlight the risk about this structure. So that means we just it just keeps us on our toes. That doesn't mean the B wave couldn't be bullish short term. It can and absolutely is. But it means we have to have this scenario on the radar that a C wave later uh, or C wave could push us down in a, in a, to a lower wave two situation later. Now, does that mean we will make new bear market lows? Well, it's not as easy as that. I am following this B wave scenario on the chart primarily on the shorter time frame, um, primarily for risk management reasons and to keep us on our toes. Um, what you shouldn't forget about a B wave is that B waves can always overshoot. So there is absolutely nothing stopping this B wave to take us to all time highs. Okay, very, very important. There's also nothing stopping this chart after a high B wave to yeah move down in a C wave, but basically avoid a new low, but just for example, in a so-called running flat structure, the A wave would be here, the B wave could overshoot and the C wave then doesn't need to move below the low of the A wave. If we have an overshooting B wave, the C wave can very well end above A. You need to understand that, very important when we consider the bigger picture. So it could very well be that this entire rally to all time highs could just be a massive B wave rally um, which is very difficult to forecast because B waves can overshoot, they don't have to. It's different from a wave one or an impulse, which should take us to all time highs in this case. Yeah, so that's very important to, um, to understand. B waves can overshoot, it could very well be Bitcoin moves to 100k, 100k plus, you know, um, and all, all that Solana does is just a corrective wave to a uh, wave B. We would then come down in a C wave of a larger degree wave two afterwards and could then go in a third wave. Now that's not bearish, okay? It's very important to understand this is not a bearish perspective. It just means that the cycle is structured in a more complex or corrective way at the moment before then Solana has a chance to really rally and escalate in a third wave, maybe in the next cycle. It's very complex, best to focus on the present and therefore we also take a look at the shorter time frame wave count right now. Let me just shift that back. But if, if everything goes well, sort of, you know, from a projection point of view, also in a B wave, if we get to all time highs, then I would be watching sort of the area between 440 to 713 dollars. That can always change depending on how we, how the subwave structures are developing. You may ask, okay, why do I follow primarily the B wave? Well, it has to do with the structure here, 
This here is corrective, and uh, I've explained that many times. This is not impulsive, yeah, particularly due to the structure of the July rally, yeah, the, the rally into the July highs, and also what happened here at the top. But that wasn't enough evidence, but the July rally was evidence to highlight, okay, this has to be an A wave, a B wave, and this here is a C wave in an ending diagonal. One, two, three, four, five, probably with wave three still running because we've just made a new 2023 high on, um, on the charts. So let's take a look at the four hour time frame. Then here you see this five wave move to the upside. I just indicated um, wave one, wave two, wave three, the wave four still to come with one more high. So it can escalate quite a lot. As I said, B waves can stretch out quite a bit. So don't be surprised if we have to make wave count adjustments within a B wave. It is completely normal, but I've mentioned that many, many times. Therefore, the B wave keeps us on, on our toes. Yeah. Um, now, if we go to the shorter time frame, um, the market is currently following the forecast. If you remember in the last few videos, I highlighted to you that we have two scenarios. One in which the third wave could still extend and one in which the fourth wave is already unfolding simply with a high B wave. Um, for a high B wave, this is now too high. But what is more important is structurally, we have five waves up of the November lows. Now that doesn't change our forecast. I've simply taken that scenario of the chart that we are um, possibly already in the wave four. But this was only the alternative. As you remember from previous videos, probably we highlighted that it's quite simple, the chart. Above support, I'm watching for a third wave extension to $79 or even 93. Below support, which is at $61.50, I will start to assume that we are in the wave four. So basically in the wave C of wave four. So at the moment, it's simply following the trend because the trend is up against support. Um, we can now add another micro support level to the chart, but certainly it seems like um, the market is pushing higher here in a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and this could be a wave five now to the upside that has now reached the $79 target. Um, in the next step, it could reach 93. And if it extends further, we will probably look at $113. They are all extension levels that have been on the chart for many, many weeks. Um, obviously, we always need two scenarios on the chart um, because with just one, it just doesn't help you with risk management. Now, I've added, um, therefore, another scenario to the chart in which we could see a much more bullish escalation um, to the upside. Not what I primarily look for at the moment, but to be honest, if we break above $93, I will have to assume that. And in this scenario, um, all of this here was a wave one of three. So it's simply the same scenario, just simply another extension of wave three. This is a wave two, then a wave three would be unfolding now, um, four, five. So this is the bullish escalation count. And um, again, what I said to you in recent days and weeks, we should not assume that a top is in place until even the first micro support level is breaking, or at least the first micro support level is breaking at the moment we are well above support which was this trend reversal area potential pullback entry point and um, we need to stay focused on the trend which is currently up um, and i would now at least minimally like to see a break below the b wave low at 69 dollars pretty much to indicate that some kind of a top has formed until we don't even see that the focus can be on higher um, towards the targets are indicated just be aware that we are approaching the ascending trend line again. And that's just around $81.60. So could see some, we could see some setbacks from there. Yeah, that's my update about Solana. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.